Hey guys, this is Nick with Nick and Live DIY, and today I'm going to be going over Pergo Timbercraft laminate flooring. So if you know anything about Olivia and I, we are taking on a full home remodel. It's our first time doing any of these jobs. I mean, literally anything at all, it's our first time. And so one of the first things we did in this house was putting in laminate flooring, and we did about 1,800 square feet. So in the beginning, didn't have much experience, but I think after doing a full house, I've got a lot of tips and tricks, especially for other first timers that I think would be helpful. But I want to start by actually going over the product. So going over the actual kind of laminate flooring and uh, really just some of the details behind it and everything I know just to help you make a decision in case you're looking at getting this Pergo Timbercraft laminate. So right off the bat, uh, I'll go ahead and move some of these tools out of the way. I'm going to just go over the actual flooring. And I wish that I had a video like this whenever I was looking because I looked around quite a bit and didn't find anything that was really that helpful. I want to start by going into some of the details about the actual flooring plank. Uh, as you can see, it's a really sturdy plank. I was pretty surprised when I got them out. Uh, I mean, you can hold it just barely on the end and that thing is stiff as a board, uh, no pun intended. And so, yeah, it's a really, really sturdy plank, which is something I like about it. And for the price, uh, it is $289 a square foot. And so that's really, it's a very affordable laminate flooring. And uh, it depends on how much you're doing, but I think it's really doable. And for, you know, what this looks like, it's great. So something I really like about the planks is the actual surface and the texture of it. I'm gonna show my little side camera over here. And uh, if it's able to see it, and I'll show some other videos as well, but this texture is a hand scraped wood texture. And uh, it's really, really remarkable. It looks very realistic and something that's awesome has been when we've had guests over. Uh, several of them have complimented our wood floors and uh, nothing feels better than when you just finished putting in laminate flooring and someone comes in and says, wow, your wood floors are beautiful. So if you're able to see some of the texture here, it is actually called their Ultra Definition Technology, which, uh, I mean, it's a pretty self-explanatory. It just replicates natural wood. So, I mean, you can see the knots on it. You can actually see the grain and the notches. Another thing I really like about this is that it is scratch resistant, scratch proof. It's very durable. That's really what I'm trying to get across. So uh, you can see, and then this is just, uh, this is my pull bar that I'm using whenever I install the floor. But I, mean, I can use the edges and actually scrape, I can scrape across the plank and it's not leaving scuffs or scratches. Um, and I, from my experience, anything that I've seen, if I've scuffed it with my shoes, you just wipe it right off. It's not a problem at all. Very, very durable. Uh, that's a big plus for me. Um, another thing that's great about it that I really like is whenever you're installing it, it actually replicates other boards. So these are a very wide plank, which uh, I think they're about seven and a half inches wide by 48. So 47 and a quarter is the exact. So it's a very wide plank, which just looks really good on the floors but these replicate smaller planks. And so what it does is it actually makes your floors appear more staggered than they really are. So what I did whenever I installed these, and uh, part of this was due to a little bit of an experience, but also I, I was looking at the instructions and um, whenever you're wanting to stagger your ends of these planks, you're gonna wanna keep them oh, probably about a foot apart or more uh, as far as the ends. And so whenever I was doing that, you actually have all of these little fake end pieces and it makes the planks appear even more staggered. So that's just a, that's a nice feature to the surface of these that uh, makes it all just blend in and look more natural, you know, once it's all installed. Uh, another great thing, it's got the uh, locking technology, so the tongue and groove, so that really helps with installation. So one tip, you wanna let these acclimate for about 24 to 48 hours inside of where you're gonna be installing them. So whenever I bought all my flooring, I ended up putting about 80 boxes in, uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe closer to 90 boxes. Uh, I set them all in my living room and I actually had them there over a week before I started installing. Uh, I would suggest at least 24 to 48 hours and that, that way it can adjust to the humidity and the temperature of the room. Another great feature about these is they are waterproof. So this is something that I get asked a lot. Are they truly waterproof? Because that's one of the big plus sides of vinyl plank flooring over laminate is that people say, well, you know, vinyl plank is truly waterproof. So these are waterproof flooring. The caveat to that is that you have to use a sealant on the side. So whenever you're leaving an expansion gap on the edge up against the wall about three eighths of an inch, you have to fill that with sealant before you put your trim back on. 
or if you have trim on, you can still seal the base between the trim and the flooring. And that's truly where that waterproof seal comes in. So if you don't use that caulking or sealant, uh, then you might lose that waterproof ability. But if the water is just setting on top of the surface of these, then you still have, uh, you know, it's still going to be waterproof, which is great. But once it goes over the edges and can get under it, uh, that's where your issues are going to, you know, start coming into play. So now I want to go over some of the tools that I use. I've set out a few of them right here. And uh, this definitely going to be the most important, these two things right here. And I will show you how to use these, but I'm going to kind of just go over each of them first. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to go in and I'll show you exactly how to use each of these tools. All right, so first, this is your rubber mallet, and this is gonna be your life whenever it comes to putting in these laminate floorings, specifically because they are a pretty heavy duty flooring. And so on every single connection, I was using my tapping block and my mallet. And uh, you're just gonna use these together. You're gonna put your tapping block up against the flooring and hit it with your mallet. So it's as simple as that but obviously there's a little bit more to it. So definitely I would buy probably this kit. Uh, I think the brand is uh, Rex Betty, R-E-X-B-E-T-I, but I bought these on Amazon. It came with this, the, uh, the mallet, the tapping block, and uh, it came with about 30 of these spacers, which are great to put on the edges uh, to give you that expansion gap that you will ultimately need. This is called your pull bar. And so let's just say that there is a wall right here. So just imagine there's a wall coming in. This is the edge piece. Um, and this side is not quite connected yet. There's a little bit of a gap. I haven't put that in. So with a wall right here, I'm not able to get my mallet in to actually hit this plank into place. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my mallet and take my uh, pull bar and you're gonna put it right up against this edge and then you can now hold this into place and just like that, you're gonna tap it back in. So that way you're able to pull in your connections, um, you know, in those weird tight spaces. So these, all three of these, you gotta have them, uh, especially with this kind of flooring. I don't think there's any way that you could really get by without those spacers you don't necessarily need, but they definitely help with keeping that expansion gap into place. Um, the next thing with this specific flooring is gonna be an underlayment. So this kind of laminate does not come with an underlayment built in. Uh, some of them do, some vinyl plank flooring doesn't need underlayment, but for Pergo specifically, uh, what they're going to suggest is called Pergo Gold. Uh, it's a little bit pricey, but you don't always have to use it. There are a lot cheaper alternatives. So I actually ran out of Pergo Gold. Uh, I had like one line left. I didn't want to buy a whole other pack. So you, I just bought this little uh, foam underlayment and I used that instead. So there are cheaper alternatives, but I will say I did almost all of my house with Pergo Gold. I would highly suggest it. Uh, it is really, really great to use. It's three millimeters thick. It, uh, let's just, I'll show you. I've got a couple pieces here, but it's got a grid on it, and I'll show that to this camera right here. So if you look at that grid, that is extremely helpful whenever you're putting in your flooring. Like, extremely helpful. You want to be able to use that to keep your straight lines uh, so you know where you're cutting. And so I'll kind of show just how easy this is. Right here on the black line, I just barely drop my razor into it, and uh, you know, it's gonna separate. I didn't cut this end piece, but very, very easy to cut. And uh, honestly, it doesn't take long at all to lay down. The benefits of the underlayment, it's gonna be a sound barrier. It's going to lighten when you're walking on the floor because it's a padding as well. There's about three millimeters to it. Um, so it's acting as a padding, as a moisture barrier. So then, you know, no moisture is coming up from your subfloor and also just a sound barrier. So there's many benefits to having an underlayment like this. Um, also, something I'll just mention, and I'll show it to this camera, is let's say that you just laid, you know, your 100 square foot, your long line, they come in packs of 100 square feet. And uh, I'll show you this. So, you've got this silver film right here, and uh, it's got a little piece of tape on it. So, you're just going to rip that off. So, let's just pretend this is all covered already. This is the part that still needs the underlayment. And uh, you just bring them together. You're going to bring this over, and uh, it just holds it all into place. So... It's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but I do like that it has that. It's the best version that I've seen, and uh, it really does lock it in there tight. And so that way, you know, if you're walking around laying your flooring, it's not gonna be popping up or getting caught. You can just kind of map out your whole room, put it all into place, and it's done just like that. Also, I want to show you 
one of the most important things you could possibly ever have when doing flooring is knee pads. So uh, this is the brand that I bought. I can't even hardly see it anymore. AWP. They're like 30 bucks at Lowe's. Invest in a decent pair of knee pads. Uh, these are breathable gel zone. You can kind of see them right there. But uh, it makes a humongous difference. You're on your knees constantly. You're squatting, you're bending down, you're falling to your knees real quick, and then you're gonna go cut at the saw and come back. And so you wanna make sure that your knees are protected. You don't wanna have to have knee surgery later on in life because you destroyed all the cartilage in your knee and uh, you don't have any left because you've been crawled around. So get some good knee pads, invest in them right away before you start any projects. And uh, you'll realize you're using them all the time. I use them literally every night whenever I work on the house. Pretty much I'm always wearing knee pads. So the only other thing I really wanna go into right now is gonna be the saw. So I went ahead and grabbed the flooring saw and I wanna kind of show you a little bit about it first. Uh, and then I'll actually, I'll probably take it out in the garage and do some cuts just to show you some things. But I want to show you how it works and why this makes a massive difference. Uh, it's about $140, $150, so really pretty affordable. And there's not a lot to it, truly. Um, what's great about it is you can cut boards both vertically and horizontally. So let's just say, you know, my cut is about right here. It's going to go up against this to keep it nice and flush and then you're going to come in with your saw obviously you're going to turn it on and make that cut so very quick very easy it's small it's mobile this is the skill saw flooring saw but also if you're not wanting to just do horizontal you can make this adjustment and uh, i'll show you that right here and uh, i'm going to flip this around and you can actually see there's a little bit of a bracket right here this way, you're able to cut boards uh, the long way now. So what I would do is I would keep the saw in place up against this back saw, and I would push my boards through just like a table saw. So let's say you know, you've got your board marked right here. You need to cut it all the way through and just rip it down. You can actually push your board straight through right out the back, which is uh, it's a really great thing to have because sometimes you're gonna get to the end of a wall, uh, for instance, this one right here, and I had to cut about two inch uh, spots, two inch boards. So I would rip it down to two inches and uh, I couldn't have done it without this. Made a really significant difference. So now I'm gonna show you some of the actual process of connecting the boards. Uh, and I'm gonna do that probably out in the garage. Okay, so I'm in my garage and uh, I want to show you a few different things. So we're going to imagine that this is the back wall back here. And sorry for the shadow, but uh, this is the edge of the board that you're gonna wanna put on the back wall. So we've got your, your tongue and your groove. So this is the groove, this is the tongue right here. So what I would do, let's say if that's that back wall, I would get this, I'd take the whole tongue off. I'd put that up against that back wall. So what I'm gonna do, is uh, even with the wall here, I, I want to put some weight, especially in the beginning. It gets really, really hard in the beginning. But what I like to do is I like to take the tongue, and uh, you can see already it, there's a little bit of pressure right there. The board is kind of sticking up, but uh, it slid right in. So I would slide it into place, and then I put pressure on it, and you can actually see how it connects right there. The entire board just connected. And then what I would do, just as a... A kind of precaution, but I would get my tapping block just like this, and you can see that little groove on the edge. And I would just tap that, make sure it's all the way in place, and then I would get uh, keep going. Another thing that I want to talk about is staggering. So you want to make sure that your ends are always staggered. So let's just say this is the end, this is the wall right here, this is a wall right here. So obviously this isn't gonna be how I would put the board. So I'm gonna take that one out. What I would do here for the next board is uh, let's just say the first board is a full board. So this groove is gone, this tongue is gone. There's a 3 8 inch gap. And it's really much easier once you get going, but I'm just showing you this because this is these are all things that are important to know. What I did and you can do it in two different ways. You can do it in quarters, so you can cut the board into uh, thirds. That's what some people like to do. I went by halves, and so what I did is a full board and a half board. 
with certain kinds of flooring, that's gonna give you an H format. And I know people are gonna call that out, meaning that you have an end right here, an end right here, an end right here, and it just goes on and it makes an H ultimately. But because of this specific flooring, having so many of these fake seams, it, it just blends really smoothly. So I found it a little bit easier uh, doing just the boards, one full board, one half board. So we're just gonna pretend that this is all a flat edge. I did a full board, then I did a half board. And so what you're gonna do is, once you've done that half board, now you are able to come back in with a full board. And uh, you're gonna start cutting boards to size at the end. So I'm gonna come in here, I'll flip that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. So I like to put a knee on the board, put a knee on the board, and I'm gonna slide it in on that first spot. So I'll show you that from right here. Okay, so this is, uh, this is <laughs> I don't have a lot of room right here in my garage, I've got some weights, but uh, I've slid this one into place. I'm gonna push it down, and uh, I wanna make sure that this tongue and groove are gonna be connecting correctly. So what I would do now is I would go to this edge over here, and I would use my tapping block to tap that back into place. So just know I'm gonna go on this edge, I'm gonna tap it like that, and uh, hopefully you're gonna see this gap close. But in the beginning, it's a lot of making sure that your weight is on the board, so then you can get these nice, good finishes and connections. You want all of your joints to be like that, perfectly closed uh, and flush. So a lot of it is just gonna be uh, repetition. You'll get better with time, but uh, that's really the main thing that you're gonna wanna do. So one of the other things I didn't really talk about is going backwards, back building. So if you, uh, let's say normally this is gonna be the back wall, you're gonna be going this direction with the groove going in the direction that you wanna go. You'll slide the tongue in, that makes it so much easier. Some spaces, and actually my living room, my entire living room, because I didn't wanna have a transition in my house I had to go backwards, uh, and that's a long story, but it's still totally doable. You're just gonna slide the groove in, and just like that, I mean, you can still see how it locks into place. You can tap that in if you wanna make sure it's nice and sealed, but uh, it is totally possible. You just gotta slide in that way and then lock it into place. So it's really, it's not too bad. You, uh, you can go in either direction, but definitely it is best to go tongue up against the wall, groove forward, so then you can just keep sliding the tongue into the groove and uh, it goes pretty quickly. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to get your measurements without uh, having to use a measuring tape. Here is the board in the direction that it should be going. There's an, an imaginary wall, so pretend this black is a wall. And uh, this is where we're at right now. So we've put the boards up to this point. Really quick, all you gotta do, flip the board, just flip it completely over line that up with the wall, and then I grab the Sharpie. So now at the top of this, I'm going to make that mark exactly on that point. And so now I can go to my saw and make that cut. Okay, so we're not getting confused here. I wanna make sure you understand the exact way that you're flipping the board because this, this was what saved me so much time. So there's a wall right here. I cannot go past this wall. This is a wall. And uh, we're just pretending that all that flooring above is already done. This is the spot that I need to fill. So here's your groove, it's facing this way. So here's my groove facing this way. I'm going to flip the board completely like that. I'm gonna put this up against the wall and that is gonna be where I make my cut. So you can see I already marked it, that's gonna be up. And uh, you'll get in the hang of knowing exactly where to cut it to where it's gonna end up right on that same line. Uh, and you wanna have an expansion gap right there, three eighths of an inch from the wall. So generally what I do is I put it right up against the wall uh, and then I'll usually mark it a tiny bit shy of the actual edge and it uh, ends up lining up just right. So now I'm gonna go cut it. Got my board right here. And uh, you can cut it uh, this way. I actually prefer to have the laminate facing up. So what I'll do is I'll normally transfer this little mark onto that side and uh, I'll cut it with the laminate facing up. This blade has been used quite a bit. So there is gonna be a little bit of uh, 
a little kind of damage, I guess, on the board, but not gonna be bad. I definitely need a new blade though, so I'm gonna make this cut. I don't have a bag on, I just went and grabbed this real quick. So now I'm gonna take my board, and uh, you can use these other ones to start new rows. That's the best part. Now let's come back over here. And again, we're gonna pretend that there is a wall right here. So just keep using your imagination that there's a wall. So only one of these two boards that I just cut is gonna be able to work. And obviously, it's not gonna be that one. So it's gonna be this one. Groove into tongue, groove into tongue. Side that was cut, you can see uh, that old blade right there. It's not quite perfect, but it's gonna be covered by trim. So then what I would do is I'm gonna come in right here. I'm gonna grab my tapping block and uh, I'll actually grab my pull bar as well. You can see why knee pads are so important. I could not be able, couldn't do this without knee pads. And uh, what I like to do, a little quick blow to make sure there's no dust. Oh, uh, so that's a wall. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. So what I'll probably do is if there's a wall there, normally I start by pushing it in on this side. And then I will grab this and tap this into place. It's really hard because uh, it's all moving. This would be like doing my first couple rows. So because I started on this side, this one already closed really well. Um, what I would do, and I, because there's an edge on here, everything's a little bit different right now, but what I would normally do is I would come in right here, if there was any room, and tap this back into place right here to close this gap if there was anything left. But uh, yeah, so whenever you're cutting your boards, that's what you're gonna be doing. And then you can use this other piece. You'll be able to go to the, net, the new wall and uh, use this as a half board and start a new row. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about laminate flooring, about the installation process, and Pergo Timbercraft as a whole. This is just the first video of many where we're gonna be showing you guys products and different things that we've used throughout our home remodel. So if you're a first timer and you're wanting to learn exactly what it's like, definitely stay tuned and subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be showing you guys a lot more different transformations just like this one.